Okay, welcome everyone to TAM Lab number 45. Uh, today, I'll be going through a more or less a workshop of how to deploy vRealize Automation 8 and what the deployment options are, right? Um, I don't expect we're gonna get into vRealize Automation 8 from a, here's how you configure it and start using it, right? This is more around how do you deploy it and what are the options around that, so. Um, should be a, a pretty good topic because I've gotten a lot of questions uh, whether or not we're going to cover something like this here. So uh, it seems very relevant for our customers and you know the things that we're doing. So, all right. So let me stop the PowerPoint and let's jump right in. So I've set up a few scenarios in my lab here, um, and we'll we'll kind of run through all of those. So first things first, how do you deploy this thing? Well. Let me back up. Let me show you, I put together a little Word doc that kind of talks about some of the options that we have, right? So here's a couple of URLs and I'll share this afterwards, right? Um, these are good references uh, as far as how to architect and what's new with it, how to do the load balancing, things like that. Um, but when it comes to how do you deploy it, there's a few options we have uh, available. So first off, before I even jump into that, let me just get this out of the way. If I'm a customer, and I don't own VRA or the vRealize suite, um, I wouldn't buy it. I would absolutely go to our SaaS offerings. I would leverage VRA Cloud, vRealize Log Insight Cloud, and soon to be available vRealize Operations Cloud. Um, there's very little business value in knowing how to architect these applications and install and upgrade, right? That's, there's not a lot of business value there. There's a lot of business value in terms of consuming the products, which is what the SaaS offerings allow you to do, right? So that's my first statement. If I don't own it, I'm not gonna buy the on-prem versions. I'm gonna just uh, leverage the as a service offerings, right? So that being said, if I do own it and I do have a use case where I wanna deploy it on-prem, um, here are some of the options. So again, we're just focusing on vRealize automation here. So we're not gonna get into uh, Log Insight. We're not gonna get into vRealize operations, things like that. So number one, you're gonna to need to go out to my VMware and download the installer. So it looks like this, it's really big. So this is the VRA LCM installer. It's almost uh, 10 and a half gigs essentially, right? So this includes Lifecycle Manager, it includes VRA and it includes VIDM, which is a requirement. So you're gonna download this and what I did actually was I uploaded it to my content library and I attached it to this SQL uh, server here, which it technically is a SQL server, but it's turned into my jump box and I do all sorts of stuff on there. So if I jump over to that. Uh, question. Sure. Uh, if, you, if you go with the SaaS offering and you're, and you're using hybrid cloud, mm -hmm. how can you utilize the array for on-prem? So they have the concept of uh, proxy, what do you call them? I forget what they actually call them, but basically it's a little appliance you put on-prem. Okay. Uh, it's like a proxy appliance. Yep. Uh, and it's very minimal from a resource perspective and there's nothing to it as far as architecting. You just deploy this appliance, you connect it to your SaaS offering, and then it uses that to connect to vCenter and all those other things. Oh, okay. That's uh, another reason not to buy on-prem. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And it's very similar with uh, Log Insight Cloud. It's essentially a collector. And I think they're even merging these appliances into one. So okay. depending on what SaaS services you are subscribed to, it basically spins up container-based workloads within the appliances. Okay, so, thank you. Yep, so you really just need internet connectivity, right? So very simple. Good question. So. Um, I've mounted that ISO to this SQL server. So if we look at it here, I just wanna kind of explore the contents of it. So uh, there's not a whole lot in here. So if you look at OVA, we've got our VIDM and we've got our VRA OVAs and these are pretty big, right? And then if we go to LCM, here you can see it includes the OVF tool. That's gonna to be leveraged to actually deploy all these things. And this is the LCM OVA. So if you wanted to deploy these components um, manually, you could do that. You can't do it with VRA. You have to leverage Lifecycle Manager to deploy VRA, which is why it's all bundled together here. 
but you could definitely deploy Lifecycle Manager manually, and you could deploy VIDM manually. Um, and then under the UI installer, we have basically little applications for you know, Linux, Mac, and Windows. So what we would do is just come down here, double click the installer application, and we're off and running. So there's two options here. Uh, the main one is obviously install. That's gonna be kind of the, the first step into doing all these things. There is an option for migrating, which is upgrading a previous instance of Lifecycle Manager that you have on-prem. So it's not gonna do an in-place upgrade. It's gonna deploy a new LCM and migrate all those, uh, all the data over. Very similar to like uh, vCenter nowadays, right? We just kind of migrate. So let's go back to our Word doc here. Um, so these are the options we have. If we're using this easy installer option, which is what you're looking at here in the background, um, there's three different methods or options that we have available. So number one, we can deploy Lifecycle Manager and IDM. In fact, that is required for any option here. You have to deploy LCM and you have to deploy VIDM. There's no other option. Um, after that, we have the ability to skip the VRA installation and let these two components install. And then we can go back into LCM after it's completed and then deploy VRA from there. The second option, again, we have to deploy LCM and VIDM, um, but we can also deploy VRA right there as well. And we have the ability to choose a standard deployment, which is a single node, or we can do a cluster deployment, which is three nodes. Um, keep in mind, if we do a cluster deployment, we need to have load balancers uh, already set up. So the load balancers are for VRA and uh, orchestrator. Uh, and then you probably also want to come back after the fact, because it's going to deploy VIDM, a single appliance. You would likely, in a production environment, you want to come back and deploy a secondary VIDM node. So you have got HA there as well. Any questions on our options? Hey, Steve, when, when you deploy the single node, down the road, is it possible to make that into a multi-node or not really? Um, as far as VRA? Correct, yes. I, I'm not sure. We could actually check because uh, the, the scenarios that are pre-deployed here um, will allow us to kind of go in and, and check that. Um, real quick, I'll add with Lifecycle Manager, um, you have the option, at least around IDM, uh, where you can go and scale it out from within Lifecycle Manager. So you go to an environment and you can manipulate yep. it from that fashion. So it may be plausible. I have, personally, I've never done it for VRA, but um, the mechanics are there, at least within Lifecycle Manager, to help scale uh, vRealize solutions. So hopefully it's there. Yeah, I think, I think it's there. It's definitely there for VIDM. Um, so we'll, we'll check for VRA if that's possible to scale it out from there, which I, I would imagine it is. Um, I saw somebody raise their hand. Anybody else have a question? Bill, are we good? Has anybody got questions? Okay. Um, and then outside of the easy installer, the next option we have is basically to go to uh, the contents of this, oops, not that contents of the ISO and go directly to vCenter and deploy VR LCM or Lifecycle Manager, right? This is kind of the more the traditional way where you would deploy this standalone and then you log into VR LCM and you would deploy now VIDM and VRA. And one thing to keep in mind, this new version of Lifecycle Manager, before you can deploy any products, meaning Log Insight, uh, Network Insight, VRA, VROPS, you have to deploy v VIDM. It's like the very first step that you have to do, and there's no way around it, at least not that I could find. Uh, let's see, I see something in the chat here. Okay, well, let me know if, if there's another question. Yep. So those are our options. Now, what would I do if I'm a customer and I'm installing this thing on-prem? Um, if I've never used VRA and I have a test environment, I would absolutely just do option two here. Right, single deployment, single node. Um, I timed it and it took 55 minutes in my lab to deploy three nodes, right? So Lifecycle Manager, VIDM and VRA. 
It didn't require a load balancer. It's going to use all self-signed certificates, which is fine. All right, this is just so I can get familiar with VRA. If I'm deploying a full-blown production environment, I would either do, let's see, this option here where I deploy Lifecycle Manager and VIDM and I skip VRA because I want the ability to leverage custom certificates, which the easy installer doesn't do. It's going to do self-signed certificates. I mean, you can go back and remediate that later, but I would probably just do it um, you know, a little bit more controlled. Or I would do this because this gives me the ability to leverage the right certificates, deploy VIDM the way I want it, more in maybe like a clustered environment or a configuration, um, and then I'd get to VRA. So it's a bit more work, but when you use these easy installer options, it also creates things within Lifecycle Manager like the data center, for instance. You know, like I have kind of OCD, right? And when I create a data center, data center within Lifecycle Manager, I want it to be named appropriately. Here, it's just gonna say default data center, right? So yes, it's easy to deploy, um, but it's maybe not as clean or as descriptive as you want it to be. So any questions around that or thoughts? Okay, so that's a lot of talking. Let's actually jump in and start doing some of this stuff. So what I wanted to do was simulate a standard deployment, which is this option two here. Uh, and I've already done it ahead of time, but I'm gonna show you what it looks like to do it from the easy installer. So we're gonna come in, we're gonna say install, right? These are the three components that it's gonna install. It gives you a little uh, nice description of what they are. We'll click next. And I've done this a bunch of times, so most of the values will be pre-populated for us here. Uh, we've got our end user license agreement, of course, and then our customer experience improvement program. And then now it wants to connect to vCenter. So you put in your vCenter information and it's gonna verify the certificate, accept that. Now it wants to know where do we want to deploy this from a folder perspective. So I'll choose vRealize. Which cluster or compute resource do we wanna use? Which data store do we wanna use? And thin or thick? Uh, it's vSAN, so it's gonna be thin anyways. And now we specify our network settings, which is more or less the common settings, right? So this isn't for any one component, it's just kind of the, the settings that will be applicable for all components. So which network do we wanna put it on? Are we doing, uh, well, we only have static as an option for IP assignment. Subnet mask, default gateway, DNS, domain name, and then NTP servers. Pretty and straightforward. Real quick, I, th I think it's worth, again, highlighting the fact that that is common. Those are common values across um, the different products. Yes, um, which is also another good point why I may want to do this option where I skip VRA because if I'm going to do a cluster deployment of VRA, that's three separate nodes, and maybe I don't want them all to go to the same data store. The easy installer doesn't give you that option, but when you do it through LCM, you do now have the capability to say, okay, this first node go to this data store, this one go to this one, or you can even change the network settings if you want for each one. So it's, it's a lot more granular, a lot more options, but you know, it's gonna take a little bit longer. So here we're gonna set our password that will be used for pretty much all the components here. We'll just use our typical VMware one bang. Uh, and now it wants to know the lifecycle manager VM name. So I'm gonna do LCM. Um, I can't do, because I've already deployed, if you look in the background here, I've already deployed LCM, VIDM, and VRA, which aligns with these three components here. So I've already done that. I'm just gonna show you what it would look like. So I can't choose those same, because it's actually gonna check vCenter and say, well, this VM name already exists. So I'm gonna choose three here. Uh, IP doesn't matter because I'm not actually gonna go through with this. So we'll say this. Um, next step here, we're gonna say uh, the, identi the VIDM settings here. So I'm gonna choose VIDM3. Again, the IP is not really important because I'm not actually gonna click go here. 
Um, and then the default configuration admin, I used administrator. I think people are probably more used to seeing config admin, right? That's how 7x used to work after you deployed VRA, you would log in with config admin and start configuring from there. But I used administrator, but it, it's cool now because it gives you the choice, right? Um, and then this option down here, sync group members to the directory when adding a group. So basically, I think this is more or less a fail safe. So when you add a group to the configuration, is it gonna pull in all the members or do you want it to wait until you actually entitle uh, some of those groups? So it, if you've got a huge Active Directory environment, you may not want to pull in everything right away, right? So I don't, so I'll just click yes here or check. Um, you also have the ability to connect to an existing VIDM if you have it already. So that's an option as well. So I guess you could have deployed IDM manually and done more of a cluster deployment and then gone through these steps and just leveraged that, right? And now we get to our V realize automation configuration. So in this case, I'm just gonna do a standard deployment. So give it a name here. This is the environment name that it's gonna show up in Lifecycle Manager. So if you wanted to do a dev, uh, you know, QA, prod, test, staging, whatever, right? You'd put it in here. The license key, uh, this is a temp license key. So, you know, you would add that. And then since we're doing a standard deployment, it's just a single node, right? We don't need load balancers for this. It's a very simple deployment. So I'm gonna do VRA3 and VRA3. Now again, um, it's, it's leveraging that shared network configuration from before. Um, yep. And exactly. then the little, the little switch at the top for your other scenarios there where you can skip the VRA installation as well, so. Yep, exactly. And that's more or less uh, this first option here, right? So you yep. would skip VRA. Um, I'm doing this one here, so we'll do a single standard deployment. Yeah. But we can check this box just to show you what it looks like. You're still gonna have your environment name and license key. Um, now you've got four different IP addresses and FQDNs to enter because you're gonna have the load balancer, which needs to be set up prior to doing this because it will fail, which I've seen. Um, and then you've got your three nodes. So your master, your secondary node one, secondary node two. So just a little bit more work to do. Um, by the way, I put in here, there is a great document all around the load balancing which I think I have here. So it shows kind of exactly how to do it for, you know, an F5, NSXV, NSXT, and Citrix Netscaler. So it covers most of the major ones, right? Okay, so I'll just do the standard, click next, and I'm not gonna do it because it takes, like I said, 55 minutes. I did it this morning, so I've already done it, but it'll sit there and I'll just, deploy them one at a time, basically. So I'll cancel that. So let now, me log um, in. Oh, real quick, go I'm gonna interrupt you real quick. So um, Reggie, while you're going through that, Reggie Allen did some great research um, and found the release notes for VRA 801 oh. um, and found that you can scale it with a click to scale out uh, automation. Um, you can add the components by clicking add node in the in, uh, product cards on the manage environment page. So from within Lifecycle Manager, Okay. Go into the environment and then scale out from there. Perfect. Thank you, Reggie. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and we'll be able to see that here in a few minutes. So uh, like I said, I've already done what we just kind of simulated. So these are the three nodes that I have. So let's actually start logging into these. I haven't verified that it was a successful deployment other than, you know, it finished and it said successful, but I didn't log into anything. So looking at vCenter here, we've got LCM, VIDM and VRA. So let's start with LCM. And I always got to go, I usually do this in a private window because I keep changing it out and the certificates change all the time. So let's start with and, uh, here. All right, these are all self-signed certificates. We have our very first time logging in. So it's admin at local, uh, password is VMware. I think, or maybe I changed it. Maybe I already changed it. Oh, 
Okay, I already changed it. So I did log in. Um, so here's what the new version of Lifecycle Manager looks like if you haven't seen it. Uh, it looks a little bit different from the older versions, which I think were 2.x. So it went from 2.x now to 8. I think they just wanted to align everything at 8.0 or 8.x, right? So now that we're in here, well, let me check my notes, make sure I'm not skipping anything. All right, let's see what it did here. So looking at lifecycle operations, let's look at number one, our data center. So here's where I said before, you don't have the ability to name the data center. It just says default vCenter, which is fine. But if you care about that sort of thing, you can't change it, right? You can't edit the name of it, which is not a big deal. But you could always add another vCenter or another data center, name it the way you want it, um, remove all of your deployments and re-add them, right? Import them more or less if you really cared about it. Um, looking at the environments, we have this environment called global environment. And this name you can't change. Even if you deploy Lifecycle Manager manually, the very first thing you need to do is deploy Identity Manager and it will always be named global environment. Now it'll show up under a different data center depending on how you name that. Um, but you'll see that we have Identity Manager in here. So if we look at that, we should have the ability to uh, add components here, right? So we can add additional nodes and, and more, more or less scale this thing out. And then we also have our VRA production uh, environment, right? That's what we named it. And we've just got vRealize Automation in here. So let's go into here. Yep, exactly. So we can add components, which is excellent. So we can scale this thing out. But keep in mind, you'll need to set up your load balancers at that point. So what else can we look at here? Let's go to settings. Um, you'll notice in the binary mapping, it imported the OVAs that were included with that ISO. So we've got identity manager and automation. Um, if you had deployed lifecycle manager manually, you would need to either set up your my VMware account where it'll automatically go out and download these things or you'd have to host those on like an NFS share or upload them manually to the appliance, right? So keep that in mind. Uh, let's go back to the main menu here. This locker is a new concept. So this has things like your certificates, any license keys, and any passwords you wanna save. So it's kind of a, a nice little area. Um, if we wanted to give all custom certificates at this point, we could go through that process. I wrote a blog about it and I put it in my uh, little companion guide here. Uh, in fact, we could do it if you want, but we should have time here. So, but basically you would generate the CSR, go get the certificate, import it, and then you could leverage that as you deploy products, right? Um, and then user management is where you're gonna manage, obviously your users, and then content management is more or less the code stream um, functionality. I think they used to call it uh, Houdini or something like that was the code name for it. And then marketplace, right? For the marketplace to work, you have to use my VMware credentials. But basically this will go out and find management packs for VROPs, um, you know, all sorts of stuff. I think blueprints even for VRA, things like that. So that's Lifecycle Manager. Now let's log into VRA, see what that looks like. So you can see our untrusted cert. All right. So here you can see the version. We'll go to the login page. You can see it kicked us over to VIDM at this point. Again, an untrusted cert. And now it wants us to log in. Now we don't have any other domain set up right at this point. So we're going to use that administrator. Um, with, this is where it would have potentially been admin config, I think is what it is, uh, if we had used that. So we'll log in. I think it may have been admin default or something. Yeah, okay. something like that. Um, let me, so here you go. So if you've ever used um, vRealize Automation Cloud, 
or what used to be known as cloud automation services, it looks very similar to that. In fact, this banner, it looks essentially just like our cloud services portal, right? Which is public facing our SaaS offering. Um, here you can see, you can choose an organization. Here are all of the things that you're entitled to. So you can go to identity and access management or the services here. Now we're only ever gonna have these things because this is an on-prem VRA deployment. Um, but the, I guess the, the takeaway here is it's the same code, right? We're, we're leveraging the same code that we have for our SaaS based offering. So, so at this point, um, we can probably go right into cloud assembly and now we're up and running. We can go through our guided setup diagram, right? So um, I'm not going to get into this too much. We can start poking around in here if you want. Um, but what I really wanted to do was show you more or less how it would look if you wanted to deploy a cluster deployment of VRA using this method here, where we deploy Lifecycle Manager VIDM, but we skipped VRA and now we're gonna come back to LCM and deploy a cluster VRA deployment. So that was what I had planned, but we can, if there's time later, we can come back in here and you know start playing around. I think what we should do is probably schedule a follow-up TAM lab session where we actually start now that we have VRA deployed. Let's go through this guided wizard setup and actually start, you know, using this thing and connecting to VC. I agree. And all that stuff, right? I think that's there's going to be a, a big appetite for that one. Yes. So, any questions from anyone, real quick, before I jump back into Lifecycle Manager? Did you want to see anything as far as like Code Stream or uh, Service Broker? I think you, you really need to get started with cloud assembly. I mean, that's where all the blueprints live and then you can expose all that to the other components here, so. Okay, so like I said, I already deployed, I kind of went through this first option as well and I deployed a lifecycle manager and a VIDM and I named them VRS LCM2 and VIDM2. So if we look at vCenter, you can see them here. So again, I haven't tested that they fully deployed properly. Uh, but again, what you would do is come in here, but you would skip this and click next, right? Same process. Um, so let's assume we did that. And now we can go to here. We'll log into two, just completely separate instance of lifecycle manager. But now that we're in, let's take a look around. So number one, let's go to lifecycle operations and you'll see we don't have any environments other than this global environment, right? Which is what we talked about with the VIDM. But we don't have a VRA environment. We don't have any other environments here. Um, we also have our data center, default data center with the vCenter that we added. So very similar. It's the exact same as the other one, except there's no VRA in here yet. So before I deploy VRA, there's a few things I want to do. So I'm going to come into settings um, and I'm going to go down to NTP servers and let's add our NTP servers. I always use the uh, ntppool.org. There's four of them. Okay, so we've added those. And we'll go back up to our time settings here. This is more for the appliance itself, Lifecycle Manager. Um, I just wanna make sure we're using NTP here and we wanna add our servers. Oops. So now that I've added them here, I can say use those. And we'll click save. Okay. Next thing, if we were going to deploy um, Network Insight, we may wanna add some SNMP configurations here, right? So as we connect to our data sources like uh, routers, switches, firewalls, things like that, 
Uh, DNS, we'll want to add those in. These are just my DNS or my AD servers, main controllers. Okay. Uh, what else do we have here? So, if I was going to use uh, my VMware credentials, I would come in here and add an account. Um, you may actually need to add the password first, which is in the locker. All right, so you can do it here uh, directly. But it's also, if you go back up here and go to locker, you can do it ahead of time if you come into password. And same thing, right? So you would add your my VMware password here. So I would configure my VMware. And then if I needed to download any additional components, I would add the binaries here. The easiest way is just use my VMware credentials and discover. It will see what's available and you can choose what you want to download. Um, these are the products that are supported, by the way. So we've got Identity Manager 331, still supports VRA 7.6, and Log Insight, of course, Network Insight Operations, and VRB. So the other thing we could do then is if we wanted to add a different data center, we could do that, right? But I'm not going to do that here. Um, going into the locker, do you guys want to use a custom certificate and see what that process looks like to get a custom cert? Sure. Let's do it. Okay. So let's do that. So to do that, we're going to come into the locker. We'll go to certificate and we need to generate a CSR. So what I typically would like to do is leverage the same certificate for all my vRealize stuff. I, I probably wouldn't do this in a customer production environment, right? You would do one for uh, log insight, you would do one for VRA, you do one for VROPS, right? But you can you can certainly leverage the same one because this is a SAN certificate, right? You can put in all those IP addresses, you can put in all those FQDNs. So uh, let's just do let's just do VRA. And we'll say Tilkins Lab US Grove. California, 2048 is fine. And now in here, we're gonna put in um, these things. So these are the IPs I've allocated. We've already deployed these two things. In fact, we're logged into Lifecycle Manager, and now we're gonna deploy VRA, which will consist of these four things, right? This one here is the load balancer, which I've already created DNS records for all of these. These, third, they, these last three things are gonna be actual virtual machines, right? So let's put in essentially all of this. Oop, that's not good. Maybe I'll copy this. And what did it say? Comma separated, so comma. And then I want to do VRA master. What was it? Dash node one. Was it zero one? No, just one. And VRA dash node two. So that should cover it, right? And then we want our IP addresses as well, which are 52 through 55. You don't have to add IP addresses, but I, I'll do it in my lab. When I say 52 through 55, So this is going to generate the CSR, and I'm going to save that. It downloads in a PEM file, so it's going to include the the request, the CSR. Oh, I didn't want to do that. Let's do We'll do this. So it will include the CSR as well as the private key, right? So we'll need that as we go generate our certificate. So 
the next thing that I always do, and this may be different depending on how you have your uh, certificate authority set up, but I'm going to log into my Windows domain controller that's running certificate services. So it's on DCO2. And I always use the web enrollment uh, website here. So you can see. We'll see it down here, right? So let's go to a website. And again, that blog I wrote has all this in there as well. So we'll go to localhost, cert serve, cert SRV. Okay, and you get your uh, Active Directory Certificate Services web portal here. So I'm gonna request a certificate. Um, I'm gonna do an advanced certificate request because I don't want the user certificate. And I'm gonna do the second option here. And basically what I'm gonna do is copy in the CSR into this. So if I go back to here, um, can't remember, do I need the private key? I'll try it. You paste it all in there and then choose web server. Click submit. All right, so now we've got a new cert. If we come back to here and do a refresh, we should see there's our new cert. Um, the easiest way to, to get this now is just choose base64 and download both of these. So we'll download the certificate and save it to our desktop and then the certificate chain as well. Desktop. So we've got our two, we've got our certificate and then we've got the full chain as well. So let's open this with notepad and open this with notepad. Actually, we don't even need the certificate. All we need is the, the chain here as well as the private key. So let's close the certificate. Um, let's go back to Lifecycle Manager. So now we want to import. So what did we name this? VRA.tilkins.local, I think. Uh, we don't have a passphrase. And then I'm just going to paste in the private key and the chain, which is the P, P7B. So let's take the private key. Put that there. And then from here, we'll take this P7B, which includes the certificate as well as the whole chain, right? So we'll paste it in there. Um, you can also do this option. I always just do pasting it in and it seems to work a little bit more consistently. So we'll import and look at that. It worked first try. So here's our new certificate, which we can download. We can see the detail, right? See who signed it. Uh, looks good. So we've got our certificate. Um, let's also add our license in because we're going to need that as we deploy VRA here. So I'm just going to call it temp and I happen to have it here on the stickies. Put that in, validate. Okay, that looks good. So we we'll click add and now we've got our license key. And then let's also add uh, another password here. So this will be the password that we use for all of the VRA components. So we'll just call it default. Uh, we'll put in our password. And then if you wanna give it a description, you can. Default VRA. Okay. Now that those things are done, we can go back into lifecycle operations and we can deploy a new environment. So we'll create environment. Um, the one thing 
I, I just want to stress here is you need to have that load balancer set up already, which I don't. I don't have, I kind of redid my lab and I don't have NSX installed yet. So, um, and we wouldn't have the time to sit here and watch it go through it because the single node deployment took me 55 minutes. This is going to take probably closer to an hour and a half, two hours. So, but we can still go through the motion. So we'll name this VRA production or whatever. We'll select our default password, which we just added. And then we'll choose our data center. Uh, if you want to do this, uh, just leveraging a JSON file, you can do that way easier. And in fact, once you're done and ready to submit this, you should absolutely download the JSON. So if you ever need to redo it or do another one and just change a couple things, it's, it's much faster, right? So, uh, and then our customer experience improvement program, of course, we'll click next. And now we've got our options as far as what products we want to install. So we're just going to do VRA. We'll do a new install, 8.01, and we're going to do a cluster deployment. And then it shows some sizing information here as well. So, Click next. We'll go through and read our EULA. This looks a little bit different than it used to. Uh, it was all top to bottom, and now it's kind of doing it more in a, a staged right, right to left or left to right. So we'll read that, click agree, click next. Um, here you could add a license if we didn't do it already, but we put it in the locker. So we can just select that and validate association, which means it's just gonna make sure that it's it will support the product that we're trying to install here or multiple products, right? All right, now we can choose our certificate, which we've already got. That looks good. Click next. And now we specify where we want this to be deployed. So we'll choose our vCenter. We'll choose our cluster. We'll choose our folder. Uh, if you wanted to use a resource pool, choose our network, choose our data store, and our disk mode. Next. And now here's those common network settings that we'll leverage. Now we're putting this in again because we're creating a new environment. Right. So each environment will have their own. Exactly. So like think of dev, test, prod. Yep. Okay. And now we can use our DNS servers that we've already added. And we can use our NTP servers that we've already added. Perfect. Click next. And now we're gonna get into the product specific settings here. So you can see we've got this certificate for VRA. Uh, the product password is the default that we've already selected. Here's our cluster um, load balanced VIP. So we're gonna enter in what we want that to be, which, what did I choose? It's VRA two, right? Yeah. So that's gonna be that. Um, and then we've got our three nodes down here. So we're gonna choose, uh, what do you want the VM name to be? I think I said, I'm gonna make them look like this. And 53. Okay. And then VRA node one. Fifty four. And then our third node will be node two. So at this point, we're ready to go. But I want to point out, and this is new, I believe, to this version of Lifecycle Manager, is you can now come into each one of these and change all those common settings that we had, right? So if we wanted to use a different password for this particular node or different networking settings, or most importantly, maybe a different uh, network or a different data store, which is really good. Because sometimes 
like if you deploy log insight and you want it to be thick provisioned, it's a pretty big footprint. So you need to make sure you have you know, enough space on that one data store that it was going to deploy to, but now you can actually specify, okay, split up the nodes, put them on different data stores. So that's a, that's a handy feature. Um, but otherwise we'll, we'll click next. Any questions before I move on here? No, pretty straightforward. All right, we'll click next. We're gonna run a pre-check. I'm hoping this will be successful. Basically, I had all the DNS settings, uh, the A records already created. The only thing I don't have is the load balancer, but I think it'll pass the pre-check. It would not finish because there's a point towards the end after everything's deployed and it's now configuring VRA where it actually checks to make sure that that load balancer is there and working um, and it'll fail at that point. But so are you, that, telling you, you don't have an AV load balancer spin <laughs> Not yet, Vic. It's something we could do though. Disappointed. Oh. So, so far everything's good. That'd be a good lab actually. All right, so everything passed. Uh, we can download the report if you really wanna see that. What does that look like? Okay, so maybe you wanna save this with your documentation. Uh, also where you would save the JSON file, which I'm thinking, yeah, here, if you export, here's your JSON. So let's open that, see what that looks like. Now you can leverage this JSON um, and just tweak the little things that you want, which would be much faster if you wanted to redo this, right? Infrastructure as code. So now we can click submit and it's gonna start doing it. Um, this'll take probably an hour and a half to two hours, but again, it's gonna fail because I don't have that load balancer. So we can watch it kind of go through some of this, this stuff and see it start deploying some of the components well, here. And what I appreciate, appreciate about that is, so often when we install these things, all we ever see is a progress bar. Yeah. Right? And it's like, why does it hang on 17% or you know whatever? Um, we actually see here what's going on and we understand how long it takes to do things and, and things of that nature. So this is, I mean, this is a huge change. I know I've worked with some of my, my customers and they have nothing but positive things to say about this. Yeah, it's, it's extremely helpful in troubleshooting. And also if it does fail on something, it'll t most of the time it'll say, okay, it failed because of this and you can go correct that and then just resume where it was. So you don't have to start all over. Um, it's not always the case, but, a lot of times you can just kind of pick up where you left off and continue going. So now we're deploying OVAs. So we can see that here. Yep. Oh, it's doing them all at once. So my lab is going to get a little sluggish here. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. So um, real quick, can you go back to the uh, LCM interface there? Yeah. One thing I appreciate, right, is we're not stuck waiting on this screen, you know, like, oh my gosh, let's not navigate away because this is stored as a request on the left. Yes. So you can monkey around, you can do whatever else you want and come back. Yep. And you can also see the ones that have already previously been successful and failed as well. Exactly. So you can look at, well, here's the, the global environment. So this was part of the easy installer process and when it deployed VIDM. So you can see now what it the did, path it how took. it took, yeah. It skipped some stuff. Yeah. So pretty cool. It's a good tool for sure. Uh, and you can change it. So this is going left to right. I think you can change it going top to bottom if you like that view better. <laughs> <laughs> this is so you can't screenshot anything. Yeah. <laughs> Do you, do you feel like this is the quantum leap we've all been waiting for? You know, 2.0 of LCM was close, but still had some deficiencies. It seems like this is a lot more solid than 2. Yeah, I, I feel like it is. I mean, I remember when 1.0 came out, it was a little rough around the edges, we'll put it that way. Um, but it worked, uh, assuming the perfect storm and everything was aligned, the stars were aligned, right? Um, yeah, I think we're much closer now. This is much more... Um, if they've kind of seen all the potential things that could go wrong and they've corrected most of that, especially that ability to, as you're deploying something, 
change like the data store, for instance, for each node, right? It's not all going to the same data store because that's a that can be a challenge. Um, you can also come in, and I've seen like if a if a request gets stuck, I think you have the ability now to delete it, mm -hmm. whereas before you needed to work with support and they would have to go through the API to delete that as well. But yeah, it's it's pretty good. I like it. So uh, let's see where we're at here. Plugging away. Yeah, doing its thing. Wrecking your lab. Um, can I add a couple couple little side comments here? Absolutely. We yeah, got about five um, minutes. So. Perfect. So if you go back into settings and then uh, patches, or is it binary mapping? So this is for LCM itself, and this is for all the products that it can yeah. manage, right? And then you go to product, yep, right there. You can check for patches online, um, which is pretty darn slick, right? So, you know, when it comes time to do patching, you don't have to log in and download binaries or whatever else. You can just go in specifically for patches as well. Yeah. Um, which is nice. And then the other thing, um, I was working with a customer on this, and they were using an eval license uh, to bring up VRA8, um, and that license was... Um, ending and they needed to put their prod license in. And so we went into the locker and just, you know, awareness for everybody that when you update the license, it might take uncomfortably long for it to apply to the product. <laughs> so just keep that in mind. Um, just cause you update the license, um, you may have to just be a little patient um, as it goes through and changes it, you know, in the products and whatever else it needs to. So keep that in mind. Cool. Thank you for sharing that. Um, by the way, if you come into product binaries and you don't want to use my VMware credentials or an NFS share, uh, and you want to put it local, uh, that blog that I wrote, I think I have it here about the light, uh, the certificate. It also talks about how you can upload those OVAs directly. And this is an older version of LCM, but it's still applicable. So basically you would download them all manually. And then you just basically need to upload them to the life cycle manager appliance, and then you can search for them. So it's a pretty straightforward option. Anything else? We've got about three minutes. Does anybody want to look at VRA? Or should we hold that for another session? Uh, I have a quick question. Sure. Um, you know, so what about, I mean, I have a number of customers that already have VROPS and VRA installed. Uh, what about importing an existing environment? Um, yeah, it's totally possible. A lot of times you need to have uh, SSH turned on, and I think the root password needs to be set because, like, if you deploy VROPS manually, the root password by default is blank there's no password so it will fail when you try to import that um, but yeah it's pretty straightforward so you would come in you create uh, let's say dev your ops and we want to do uh, now keep in mind it it won't support all versions so if you right. go back to settings binary mapping add binary these are the supported versions that it will support so keep that in mind, right? So if we wanted to do view ops, we could do okay. 7.5 all the way up to 8.01. But basically, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. So you'd come in, create environment. What did I say, dev view ops? We'll choose our same password. We'll select our data center, next. And now we want to choose view ops. We want to import. We'll click next. And now you basically just need to point it at the master and it will detect all the others. So actually, let's do it. I've got VROPS here. So let's do VROPS.tokens.local. That is my default admin password because it's a lab and I don't care. Uh, oh, that's what's the IP. Let's see. Thirty-two, thirty-three. We point it at the IP. It is a part of this vCenter. 
Let's see what happens. So submit. Let's see how fast this takes because it doesn't need to deploy anything. It just needs to connect and right. And it's and it, that's already much nicer than 1.0. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the VROPS admin password is invalid. Is it really? Hmm, I don't know. But anyway, that's how you would do it. Uh, okay. Apparently, I've got some password issues, but. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, pretty straightforward. If I were to and, fix that, I could hit retry now, right? And what, what's uh, nice, it, though, about even doing that, I know a lot of our customers have that, that same question, is we come to them and suggest leveraging this, or they're looking at Cloud Foundation, right? I All of my customers are looking at Cloud Foundation, and they're wondering, well, I already have VROPS. I already have uh, Log Insight. Um, so just even being able to see that here um, and what that process is is great. I, I wonder if that uh, admin password has expired. I've seen, I've seen people running into problems trying to upgrade to VROPS 8 from earlier VROPS versions. And apparently, we never used to flag the admin password as expired. You know, it never used to be a problem. It never used to stop working. But somewhere, oh. we, must, we, must, we, must, we must flag that as expired. It's certainly an issue for some customers upgrading to 8. I wonder if that's the same issue there. I wonder if you change that password and try that again. It might work. That could be it. Uh, it could also be the other thing that I mentioned is the default root password is blank. Oh, you know what, let me just. Maybe I never changed it. Yeah, permission denied. Uh, you change it from the VAMI? No, you have to log into the console, I believe. Yeah, you can change the admin password from the admin, from, from sorry from the uh, admin oh. uh, console. Yeah, but I don't I don't think you can change the uh, root password there. Though I think you have to do it. I thought if you did this, yeah, here you should be able to change it. Yeah, Let's see if that works. No, I don't know. That's another topic for another day. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? You can see VRA is proceeding as planned here. And they're all deployed. How does my cluster look? Oh, not bad. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. So a lot of different options. Uh, they all kind of get you to the same point, though. So maybe what we'll do next is schedule another follow-up TAMLAB session here where we actually go here and we start playing around. So I feel like that's going to be a lot more fun. <laughs> this was a great a great start on that path and very relevant, I think, for what we're trying to you know do as, as TAMs and VMware. So I appreciate you doing this, Steve. It's great. Of course. Yeah, thank you. Anybody else got any questions or comments? Feedback? That was great. Thanks. It was great. Thank you. Yeah, very good. You're welcome. Thanks for joining, everybody. All right. If there's nothing else, I'll let you go. Have a good rest of your week and a good weekend. Thanks, everyone. You too. Thanks. Thank you. Take care. Bye.